Welcome to the Week in Italian Startup, where we discuss the latest highlights happening in the Italian tech and investment ecosystem. The Week in Italian Startups, uh, we, this week very interesting. We, pay, we like go through a wide range of uh, interesting deals from uh, food delivery to crypto, uh, passing through you know, scientific uh, uh, people, winning of the Turing prizes and so on and so forth. So it's been, uh, it's been crazy. It's been very cool, actually. So let's, let's jump right in with Makai, Nicolo. What, the, what did you think of that? Let's start from there. Oh, well, the, it, it, Makai is the deal of the week. Um, yeah. uh, it's launched, it, it, it was launched by uh, Giovanni Cavallo, who has a long experience in uh, delivery service because he's a student entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he entered the quick commerce space uh, with this uh, offering with Makai. So he's going uh, head first uh, against uh, some behemoths that raised hundreds of millions of euros. Mm-hmm. Uh, look at the uh, look at the uh, page gorillas uh, yeah uh, the, the Turkish startup I don't remember so the, quite quite a few quite a few heavyweights yeah there we go uh, and the get here get yeah, here exactly. from Turkey uh, interesting space actually like hyper verticalized I, I was not aware of that there was a name for it the Q commerce I was stuck to the e-commerce. So the Q-commerce is something I learned uh, new today. So that's awesome. People like trying to really get stuff as quick as possible. And uh, I love the, the, the example of the founder basically that needed some toothpaste at 10 p.m. and he couldn't get it. And that's, uh, that's the beginning of the story. Very interesting. Yeah, that's lovely. Well, quick commerce is, you know, one of the trends uh, of the post-pandemic trends, if you, mm-hmm. if you, if you want. Uh, and Makai is the Italian answer to the mm-hmm. international trends. Uh, and the um, angle uh, that the startup is taking is, well, uh, all, all of these players are basically going with distribution, but a selected number of SKUs in their, uh, in their offering. So number of products that, is, that you can actually purchase on the platform uh, so that, you know, lower costs, uh, better management of the inventory, and the ability to uh, deliver everything extremely quickly. And Ma- Makai is taking a different direction, so a broader inventory. Uh, so I believe three times as many SKUs as the, the competitors. So they're going breath first, yep. uh, which, which I don't know, it's, it's an interesting, interesting take. Uh, on this on this market, so I yeah, hope and we'll see how it works. What I like is that is a sort of a supermarket agnostic. So actually, is not from any huge chain of a supermarket. They really like are trying to to do the the quick commerce first and to provide the product to people without pushing really like any 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 specific chain or anything, which which is but interesting. I have to say that in the quick commerce space. Uh, it's uh, it's a bit rare that uh, there is a strong relationship with a specific uh, supermarket chain mm-hmm. because basically quick commerce is the uh, manual implementation of dark stores. Mm-hmm. So what do you what do you do? You go in the cities, you um, rent a space with with no windows on the street, but with basically everything that basically the back back office or the warehouse of a small supermarket. So that's exactly what you rent. Uh, you automatize as much as possible, mm-hmm. and then you offer uh, delivery in the range that goes probably just a few kilometers around that yep. that, that, that store. Uh, so you, you manage your own inventory. Uh, you do everything uh, from scratch. So maybe you have a relationship with a specific supermarket or a few supermarkets, but uh, the, the point is that you, you cut costs by managing everything, and so you can get to marginality as well yeah uh, so it's comp- a different play than Everly yeah exactly you mean one so Everly is a logistics play where they offer a platform where you can buy from any supermarket whatever you want uh, but in this case the 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 key feature is speed of delivery mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so the promise of gorillas if you if you if you want is the you know reference name now with quick commerce is that they deliver to you 
anything that you buy in 15 minutes. 15, Fantastic. 15 Fantastic. minutes. Fantastic. Uh, it's quite, that's quite crazy. It's impressive. I mean, we've been spoiled by Amazon. This is the post Amazonic world, the post pandemic, post Amazonic world. And checking out the area, well, of course, uh, this is perfect for like metropolitan areas. I cannot think of it in the ca any countryside for sure. But uh, this is a great tool to use. Uh, yeah, center of Turin right here, center of Milan. Definitely, definitely something, something really cool. Uh, what is interesting is that it's quite a big round actually with uh, relatively few investors, like uh, checking out on Crunchbase. We have uh, like uh, Lumen, this cats.vc from Lithuania, which I was not aware of. And then You're plug and play, <laughs> plug and play, which is uh, definitely like, a, probably like the biggest pusher in this, uh, in this, in this deal. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. So 3 million mm -hmm. raised and uh, very curious to see how exactly they're going to expand operations. Yep, yep. Good, good to see that the, the, the lead investor is Lumen Ventures, so it's an Italian firm yep. uh, betting on this model. So yep. let's all cheer for Giovanni Mackay to go and win against the big players. Fantastic. All right, moving on. Uh, I'm just going to jump a few points uh, and then we can always go back. Um, Louis uh, investing mm -hmm. 2.5 million in Digital Magic. So as people might uh, know, Digital Magic is one of the uh, earliest uh, companies pushing the Italian uh, startup ecosystem in the digital space. Uh, they went public a few years ago, they're still public. And right now Louis is uh, doing basically um, like an equity round to basically increase the uh, the equity amounts they have in digital magic so that's uh, that's that's very interesting actually Luis has been really playing their cards extremely uh, strategically mm -mm -mm. so the, the the most interesting part of this is that in, well Luis is is a business of university and it is based in Rome and Luis has a strong relationship with El Venture is actually one of the main investors in El Venture and El Venture is an accelerate a startup accelerator. It's a listed startup accelerator. So mm -hmm. basically, the Louis the University is doubling down mm -hmm. on the uh, on the startup ecosystem. So key investor in the venture, key investor in digital magics. And it's, co it's covering quite interesting. It's covering the spectrum. Like they're basically mm. going with the, the validated uh, people that have been like playing in the ecosystem. And venture is clearly like a validated accelerator. Digital magic. I would consider it like uh, one of the the dads of the the Italian VC like slash early stage investment ecosystem. They've been around for quite a while, actually. Yeah, they, they, they have a long story, a long, a very long story in the Italian market. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so no, it's cool. Good job, Luis, for sure, and definitely like uh, interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I wonder whether this investment plan by Luis has some kind of you know for their strategic move going mm -hmm. ahead. It's just yep. a, a matter of, you know, uh -huh. becoming a relevant investor in the listed uh, companies. In that case, will they invest in HFAR? Yeah. Uh, uh, so, you know, just throwing out the question. Yeah. Or yeah. will they actually start becoming an LP mm. in private mm -hmm. funds? So where are they going with this? So that's, yep. I'm just curious about it. And another aspect is maybe how how far is digital magics in their portfolio like the one thing to consider is always to see like where are them with their deals uh are they still like a sort of fully invested or in, are they in which kind in which moment of the cycle are they in like i'm, I'm curious to see if this has any relationship with the the fact of louis entering this uh, this kind of deal like maybe thinking where an early stage like uh, uh, element would be covered by Adventure, Digital Magic maybe will cover like a, a slightly later stage deals with already like some validated portfolio. That uh, you know, kind of covering the cycle, I would say. But, yeah, that's an interesting uh, again, question. I don't know. I don't know. In, in a sense, you, you can see. I mean, uh, Digital Magic is a complex beast, uh, yeah. as Adventure is. Yeah. Um, but basically, I wonder whether investing in digital magics today is basically buying a call option on a portfolio of a, quite a broad portfolio of Italian startups. That's a good point. And, That's a good point. And so, so, so how 
how would you know this type of reasoning uh, is uh, part of the investment yeah. or, or, or is anything else? So, yeah, because yeah. it is if you think about it. So, uh, the digital is probably tens, tens, and dozens of startups. Uh, yeah, even right now, small participations, many startups. So, yeah, let's check out actually. Oh, well, here's Barca Italiana. Yeah, there you go. Essentially, you have yeah, some interesting movements, but uh, what would be cool to see is actually their portfolio and see how exactly it works out. Yep. Uh, I think they publish a report. It might be um, a matter of a quick dip, dip down. Uh, I know. I know. Episodes. That's a good point. Just a, a quick uh, taste the viewers yeah i mean just to to see like a, and i what i feel is that they've always been like broad scope and not necessarily verticalized so they've been really covering a lot of ground which uh, which is a good strategy especially for uh, uh the like a very broad and early portfolio uh for 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 like a company that is starting doing like vc so as a, one of the first vcs one of the first accelerator actually they have been like uh, basically putting their their hands on a lot of interesting deals for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, from Crunchbase, from a quick look, they made Digital Mag Magics made seventy two investments. Oh wow! Since in, in, in its inception, yeah, which is probably uh, less than the reality because Crunchbase has not great yeah. coverage for, for smaller investors. But yeah, yeah, I mean, quite a few dozens of startups. So awesome! All right. Let's talk about IPOs, Alfonsino talking always about food delivery. Let's stick with food. Uh, Alfonsino, very different model. They basically bring restaurants to your house uh, through a delivery system. So they're like trying to operate as uh, in, a, in a very capillary way. And uh, so there are a ton of restaurants uh, basically available and they filed and they actually succeeded in, in, uh, in uh, being listed on the Aeronext Growth Milan as Alfonsino SPA. Uh, with, I think, um, a value, company valuation of 20 million. Well, actually, actually the free float. Uh, well, I market believe... Market cap. Exactly, sorry, exactly. Market cap, 20 million, and the 20.64% of the free float available in the market. Very interesting. Yeah, 4 million is basically a reasonable Series A in mm -hmm. terms of size. Yeah. Uh, remember that Alfonsino went through a few crowdfunding rounds I believe that they uh, didn't raise venture capital, but they mm -hmm. went through crowdfunding. And mm -hmm. we probably discussed this uh, a few weeks ago when they announced the listing. Uh, I think they uh, they were aiming to raise 5 million euros. So I think it is, it is a, an interesting information that they only raised four. Uh, so I wonder whether it, there was not enough demand or whether at the 5 million demand, the price was low i don't know but mm -hmm. just you know wondering um and one thing i have to check out is the multiples on current current numbers uh yep. for the market cap so i yep. need yep. to, to check them out and sorry yep. i <laughs> didn't make it, make it no no nick it's uh it's cool i mean we, what we've seen actually is a little bit of a pattern where even companies with the, uh, well, high growth, but not necessarily like an incredible amount of revenue. They file for success. They successfully file for IPOs. So it's uh, it's it's. It, I feel it's a good sign in in this sense. Well, that's uh, you know uh, I don't know, mm -hmm. but yes, for sure for the for the startup it, it is a good sign. Uh, from the point of view of the market, um, is it? Is it an effect that can be completely uh, decoupled from the amount of liquidity that's currently mm -hmm. around? Uh, I mean, uh, all, all the stocks that changes have basically have been going up for years, and in particular in the last couple of years, just because of liquidity. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so I just, I just wonder whether if the latest uh, raise are in effect a, a way to capture some of that liquidity, or just you know. Interesting. Uh, yeah, at least in part. I was looking at the numbers, sorry, while I was talking. And oh. on, on the 30th of June, so half year, 
Alfonsino booked 2 million in revenues. Mm. Uh, last year, same period, the number was at 1 million. So the growth has been but, quite So the question also. then becomes like, uh, would it be, was it too early in a way? I mean, some people might argue that it's, uh, it's kind of a very early, I mean, what, what is the necessity of, uh, of uh, get, getting to IPO as uh, revenue grows? And uh, it, maybe it's just a strategic matter of just that willing to accelerate without necessarily going through VC. Or maybe, yeah, probably that's what you were mentioning also. Like uh, they don't want to go through VC. They would rather, you know, go public first and maybe take it from there. Yeah, well, again, if you, if you think about it, going public is actually historically has been a way to raise financing, not mm -hmm. to, not strictly speaking, to uh, monetize an investment. So the monetization comes at a different point in time, but mostly right. you raise capital from going public. Uh, in this case, probably, I don't know. So I really have no idea. But for sure, we can see that they raised 4 million and that's a series A and that's something that a startup, a private startup would aim after, aim for, yep. uh, after the, uh, the seed rounds raised by, by crowdfunding. Yep. Again, when you, when you go for the crowdfunding route, it's, it also might be more difficult to, to, to raise venture capital because, you know. Interesting. There are a lot of reasons. Yeah. Cap table, the different governments. Cle how clean the cap table is and people, mm. yeah, that's true. Not a good a good sign. Some people take it, not a good sign. So maybe, it's maybe difficult. yeah, no, maybe that's uh, that's part of the of the movement. Another IPO in a totally different business, augmented reality solution for remote assistant, Econa technology, going public on the um, uh, Austrian stock exchange. So that's uh, I thought it was that's the first time I actually come across the that specific stock exchange. I don't know, unique if you you've seen other people going IPO on, in Austria. And that's uh, that's what that was interesting. Uh, I don't. I might be wrong because memory might fail me. But this is the second time an Italian startup uh, floats on the Austrian stock mm -hmm. exchange, and the other time. The IPO was by the same team that actually IPO in this one. Ah, okay, wow. Yeah, right. so uh, from the article, uh, you can see that there's Domenico Sita involved, yep. Yep. who's the one who also listed DHH technology. It's mm, basically okay. an aggregator of um, uh, internet services in the uh, Baltic. Uh, Eastern Europe region, and it's the interesting play basically. You aggregate smaller players in secondary markets, yep. and you create an interesting enough uh, asset to list and to make a good business. Uh, so he has uh, quite a history of doing that. Interesting, super interesting. Hmm. And, and in this case, they they directly listed the company. Yeah, exactly. That's another very interesting position. Yeah how to, mm. that they went directly like there. So that's, uh, that's also something strategically, which is like uh, not too common. Yep. And, and uh, this is, this I, I have no idea, but it would be interesting to understand why. So mm -hmm. why make a direct listing at the 28 million mm -hmm. market cap valuation? So what? What is the, the logic point? behind so, it? Yeah, 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 totally. So you, 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 don't, you only have the existing shareholders uh, on board. Uh, so there is no um, market, so you have to find the buyers. Uh, and I took a look at the, um, uh, the book and at the uh, movement of the price the day after the, the, the IPO. The IPO on Thursday and I uh -huh. took a look on, on Friday uh -huh. and nothing happened. So. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. I, I didn't see the, any, any, any transaction. So the, the, the price was exactly the same, but it was zero. Uh, maybe I didn't look well enough, which might be well possible. Uh, but still, I 
I would be quite curious to listen to, to the story about uh, the decision to go to a direct listing on the list of exchange at that price with that company uh, and understand what, what was the goal, what's the idea, what's the plan behind it. Yeah. So maybe it has also to do with the future investment rounds when maybe some more institutional investor, maybe they would uh, pointed the company toward like Austria instead of other stock exchange. Who knows? I mean, it can be, it can be re really like a lot of variables in playing in this, uh, in this kind of operations. Very interesting. But the company cool. definitely looks uh, incredibly like uh, working well. I mean, 32% uh, of growth. Uh, so that's, uh, that's absolutely not too bad in the past three years consistently. So, but if they if they made another thirty percent of growth this year, so then the revenue would be around three million. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So three million commanding at twenty eight million of market cap because they decided that was the price. So they, mm -hmm. they didn't do any book building. So they just listed and said, you know, this is the price. That's it. It's like. How many? Nine, almost ten times revenues. Because yeah. reasons. <laughs> I mean, um, um, it's the multiplier, Nico. It's the it's the valuation of buy multiplier. We know that. It's like uh, there is a list. You go through the number and you just multiply. <laughs> it's but I agree with you. It's very it's a very um, arguable way to uh, evaluate the company, of course. And, uh, uh, yeah, the, the point is that not that I argue this is a wrong or a right number. It's just I would really love to listen to the story about you know, coming up with that number, that uh, decision, that reasoning. I'd really love to, to, uh, to chat about that. One of the interesting parts is uh, how, to, how to get to valuations. That's always a fascinating way on how people think. So, exactly, and usually, usually when you IPO, you've got to go and perform the book building and you have professional investors that look at your papers and say, okay, I'm going to buy 10 shares per, for 4 euros per, per share. Yep. Because, I mean, I believe this is their evaluation. Yep. And yep. you've got your curve. Awesome. At least in, uh, <laughs> different story. Different story. Different. We'll see. Let's move back to Italy with uh, Satispay and Yag Platform to Piedmontese excellencies of, of a startup, I would say, proudly. So uh, basically since last week, uh, you could actually deposit funds directly to Young Platform, which is a crypto exchange, one of the most probably uh, fastest growing in Italy. Satispay, everybody knows, it's a paying platform which allows quick and fast payments. So this is a very good uh, news, especially for young platform, where actually they would open people, I mean, the, the full Satispay user base, which is probably half interested in crypto, to actually jump in uh, with a click of a button. So very, very good news for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I wonder who, who is the party who's uh, benefiting the most from mm -hmm. this partnership. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Sure. Uh, when you remove friction from entering a marketplace such as the Young Platform, that's always the best for the marketplace. Totally, totally. Uh, considering the huge co uh, consumer base uh, behind Satispay, I probably have my opinion about who's the party who, who will try to benefit the most from this. Uh, but still, it is a very interesting uh, movement because probably it is the first consumer fintech service in Italy going so close to crypto? So uh, the, only, it be? the only analogy for, from this kind of operation is with uh, Revolut. So Revolut started simplifying payments and I think only from last year that you could also purchase crypto through the same exact app. So you could like have a bank account, you could move money in different currencies on top of that, you had the crypto tab where you could actually purchase uh, any kind of cryptos from Ethereum to Bitcoin, etc. So it's not necessarily with another, uh, like as a, as, a, as, a, as a partnership with another startup, but it was natively done in a way that from one upgrade to another of Revolut, you find yourself potentially being able to invest in crypto. So that's the closest thing I, th I can think of which is That's, removing friction in that way. Mm. 
that's not from Italy though. So it's, it's not probably from yes, correct. The first Italian fintech that that was not starting from crypto because of yeah. course we have got a lot of examples from yeah. the crypto ecosystem. Yeah, that's connecting the dots. That's I interesting. I agree. For Italy, yeah, also because uh, Satispay is a very uh, unique Italian way to sort of manage payments. Revolut is completely different, different way to do so. So there is also very specific uh, uh, elements to that. So that's, uh, that's that's very true. All right. Cool. Extremely very cool. cool. Very, very yep. cool. Let's move on uh, with, uh, I would end up here with Planet Watch, uh, which is a very interesting uh, deal coming from CERN. Uh, so with a scientific, it's a, it's a science-based like spin-off. They're trying to collect as many data as possible about the breathability of air by involving a lot of people. And what is interesting, well, there are a few, a few points which are interesting. One of them being is based on a, Italian-born blockchain called uh, Algorand, and uh, that's that's really cool. And for for the listener, I would definitely recommend the interview of uh, um, the founder of Algorand, uh, Silvio Micoli, right? Mm -hmm. With uh, Lex Micali, Friedman. Micali, Micali, Micali okay. sorry. And uh, he had a great interview with Lex Friedman uh, on YouTube, and uh, it's uh, fascinating. Two hour of uh, purely, uh, you know, ranging from sort of basic blockchain notion to how he came up with Algorand. Very, very cool. Yeah, yeah, he's a Turing Award, right? Yes, yes, correct. So basically one of the highest recognitions. Uh, so that's that's not too bad. Uh, and the second point, probably uh, I forgot to, to, to mention it in the, uh, in the newsletter, is that also Planet Watch was founded by an Italian researcher at the CERN. Yes, So exactly. There's a lot of Italy in this project, and a lo yeah, See, but please, please. Yeah, yeah, no, just uh, it's this is very exciting to me. It's like super exciting. First of all, because uh, yeah, it's 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 based on a on a, on a on a very interesting way to think of data collection through blockchain. Uh, well, Algorand, a lot of people are using Algorand and the token Algo, which is also very very known. In, uh, in a lot of like crypto circles. A lot of people are building on top of Algorand as well. And another thing which I thought it was interesting was this, Borderless Capital, which is a blockchain venture capital firm. So specifically funding project based on the uh, sort of Algorand uh, economy. So that's, uh, that's, that's very narrow. Talking about the narrow investment thesis, these dudes are doing it right. Mm -mm -mm. Yep. Uh, that, that was, uh, I found it interesting as well, uh, having a, a, a fun investing specifically in it. So, I mean, this is not the first time this happens, to tell you the truth. Uh, mm -hmm. Other blockchains mm -hmm. launched their um, Kickstarter funds, in a sense. Mm -hmm. So, vehicles that invested in the ecosystem built upon the blockchain, Interesting. Because you need it. I mean, you need to attract entrepreneurs, to attract projects in order to have the building blocks uh, built on your blockchain and to start an ecosystem. Oh, totally, totally. Very uh, good strategy. Exactly. So it, it makes total sense. I don't know the relationship between Algorand and Borderless. I don't know whether they are two completely distinct, distinct um, um, uh, objects or there is a relationship such as the traditional blockchain and uh, investment mm -hmm. vehicle associated with blockchain. So uh, I believe so. that the closest connection is through one of the managing partner, which used mm -hmm. to be one of the executive of Algorand. I don't think it's this Devi Garcia who, yeah. or Arul, I don't remember, but uh, but that's, that's a, that's a, there is a close connection there. So maybe I can see how, you know, part of the team of Algorand was like, okay, you guys do the funds, raise millions, we keep going with the platform and together we build an ecosystem. Very interesting perspective. Mm -hmm. Love it. Totally love it. But in this case, they went even more specific because this is not just, you know, investing in the ecosystem above mm -hmm. Algorand. They, they launched a $10 million fund to invest yes. in the ecosystem around the Planet Watch. Correct. That's a product built on top of Algorand. Exactly. So there are different <laughs> yes. layers going on. And I believe we'll see these happening more and more 
between mm. uh, you know funds helping out uh, a blockchain ecosystem DAOs or whatever web3 new technology you can think of for sure but that's uh, that's something to keep an eye on for sure mm-hmm. i agree nico thank you so much cool. it was great uh And I'll see you next week with some more news in the week in Italian startups. That's for sure. Thank you, Jack. It was a pleasure as usual. See you in a week. Awesome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao, ciao.